Hello, my name is Dr. James R. Golding, and you're watching A Natural Healthcare Alternative, the program dedicated to your health, longevity, and well-being. We're out of the studio today, and we're here on location in our Somerville facility. And the reason for that is that we have an exciting topic today, and that topic is spinal decompression. We're here at the facility because we're not only going to talk about the treatment, but we're also going to demonstrate it. It is a non-surgical treatment option for herniated discs of both the cervical and lumbar spine. It's also for the treatment of spinal stenosis and degenerative disc diseases of the spine. Stay with us. Before we demonstrate, actually demonstrate uh, cervical and lumbar uh, decompression therapy, uh, what we're going to go over first is the conditions that would be good for rendering this treatment and how this difference differs from other forms of treatment that are available. Uh, with us today is Dr. Kenneth Kirsten of Somerset County Alternative Medicine. And welcome, Dr. Kirsten. Hello. And take a few, take a few minutes out and give us, uh, give us the lowdown of the patients that would make good candidates for the nature of this treatment. Uh, decompression therapy uh, is designed for patients that suffer from usual disc, disc problems, either disc herniations, disc bulges, or any type of narrowing of the spinal canal called uh, stenosis. The concept of decompression works on the forces that will help distract those areas and help relieve pressure off nerves and actually help re-educate muscles, ligaments, tendons, and help uh, reintroduce uh, what we call imbibition to the discs, which means we're going to try to create a more healthy disc environment. Discs remain uh, healthy by activity. Compressive and decompressive forces, such as when you're walking, you exercise, you feel better with activity. Discs require this type of motion, which we call imbibition, to help remain healthy. If they don't, they kind of deteriorate and dry up, just like a, uh, like a sponge that would be sitting in a plate of water. If you don't compress it and allow it to soak back up, it, it basically deteriorates and dries up. The forces of decompression work on this concept, and it's a gentle distraction therapy which will distract a certain amount of poundages depending on the patients and their conditions, and allow it to compress and then decompress in order to get that action. This helps the healing of the tissue, it helps create nutrition in the area, it helps re-educate the muscle spindle fibers, it helps re-educate re and take pressure off tendons and ligaments that are inflamed. And by doing all this, this helps alleviate symptomatology, mostly due to uh, compressive forces from disc degeneration or disc bulging herniations. Now, in, a in conjunction with decompression, this is the initial start of, uh, of a treatment phase, and we would also incorporate chiropractic, physical therapy, pelvic stabilization for the low back and neck and upper back stabilization for the neck, which is also very, still very important. This is just a component, and this helps us get patients better where in the past we weren't able to actually, we've reached an impasse where the patient has really not gotten any better, and they were required to go for surgery. So this is a non-invasive, uh, non-surgical technique to really, or another tool to help us maybe save those patients from having surgery or to have another alternative or a chance. So this is really exciting because traction therapy has been around for many years, but decompression of this concept has been more recent, and they've done more, um, they've done more developments through tables uh, that are more uh, conducive to these types of treatments because what's great about uh, what we're doing here is we can treat the patient in what we call a supine or a prone position. Before, a lot of times we were going to treat people, people on their stomach, and that was actually just not comfortable for patients sometimes. So now we have many options, this, and it's kind of exciting because it just adds a new um, avenue for us to uh, treat patients with and, and get some better fairly quickly. Why don't you just take a second out? Let's pull out one of these charts so that we can not only, so the, the, our viewing audience can get an idea visually of, so, of some of what the, the problems that are that uh, could be helped through decompression therapy. Okay, like I was stating before, that we're talking about that, that we're going to center around the disc and what we call the motor unit complex, which means that a, a bone, a disc, a bone, and then the nerve and the surrounding soft tissue. A normal or a healthy disc would supply sufficient amount of spacing so that when the nerve, uh, the, the nerve unit exits the spinal column, it has sufficient room around here in order to be uh, functioning. 
when we have compressive forces, like a loss of a disk space, when a good old degenerative disc, which is very uh, common, uh, you know, the good old degenerative joint disease or arthritis, this is what you're experiencing, you're leaving a lot less room for this nerve to function. So we're having compressive force around this area called the neural foramina. And this is what we call a stenosis. This is all called the lateral stenosis. A stenosis is a, la a narrowing of that canal, just like uh, clogging a, a pipe. It's just, it's just less room. It's just less room for, uh, for function here. So if you can imagine if we can apply a force, a distraction force, to kind of separate that two, and then decompress it and separate it again and allow it to compress, it's creating a, a nutritional activity going there and helping that disc heal and helping that regenerate. Uh, sometimes when you have the actual the compressive forces and degenerative uh, disorders, you also develop pressure on these facet joints here. The facet joints are the, are, are the posterior elements of the spine. And if you talk to any orthopedic surgeon or, or, or a neurosurgeon, this is the big bugaboo. This is the problems they have with. They have disc replacement therapy. They can do fusions here. But when people have facet syndrome, facet problems, the arthritis in here, very, very difficult to treat. They can't operate on too much besides removing the whole posterior aspect of that. And then you're having other issues. But uh, neurosurgeons would describe that this is one of the most difficult conditions to treat. So not only are we going to treat the disc here, but we're also causing spaces uh, and, and function into these areas of facet joints, which are highly innervated with nerve tissue and are very, very sensitive. And then another condition here, which we would call spondylolisthesis, is after you actually have some decompression, uh, 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 degenerative force, you actually have a slippage forward of the vertebrae, where it actually separates these, uh, these what we call the pars interarticularis, so these bones that make that posterior elements there, and then that can cause pinching on the nerve here. So any of these conditions will be a, a candidate for uh, lumbar decompression. And now we can take the same effect and just change the anatomy and move it up into the cervical spine, for the same thing, facet syndromes, uh, you know, uh, degenerative disc disease or herniated discs. Well, that's a pretty concise visual picture of what's going on. Um, and now, what what is the difference now between, uh, let's say, you know, a little bit more differentiation between traction and and spinal decompression? Well, spinal decompression is is more designed for, like I was talking about the. Um, working on the muscle tensile strength of a distraction and then allowing it to decompress. Traction in all its forms before was basically just a straight pulling and it would pull on a certain poundage and it would stretch against ligaments and tendons that were actually what we call hot or irritated or aggravated and patients would have a lot of pain with that. With this, this is a slow progression with the, with the computerized program we have. We, it allows it what we call step-up processes in order to respond to those muscle tensions and those ligaments that are inflamed and irritated so that the patient doesn't go into a spasm because not only are we working on just distracting a joint, we're working on the biomechanics and the neurologic feedback of those muscles and tendons so that they can respond to the treatment so it's much, much more comfortable for a patient versus just a straight traction or a distraction. It's, it's, in fact, sometimes patients actually fall asleep when they're on the table because they're actually not experiencing a lot of pulling or a lot of tension, but when they get up, they're like, man, I, I feel better. I can actually feel the pain reduced um, and it, because it's not forceful. It, it, it's, there's certain poundages that we're, we're going to put on depending on the patient's size and their condition. However, it's not painful at all because it's a slow, slow process right. and it works on the response to the muscles of the body. Well, I can hardly wait We're, for us to go in and demonstrate the machine. We're going to do it both uh, initially to the lumbar spine or lower back, and then we're going to move on to the neck area. Uh, at that time, we'll discuss not only the, the, the mechanics of how the machine works, but also uh, the protocol that's normally followed and what people usually experience with the treatment. Before we demonstrate the decompression machine in use initially for the cervical spine, we're going to discuss the mechanics of the machine first before demonstration. Uh, currently, it's set up for use for the neck area. And Dr. Kirsten, you want to tell us a little bit about this? Okay. <clears throat> well, basically, this is straightforward. The patient's going to lie on their back, and their head is going to go into this area right here. These are the, the posts where they're going to grab up by the base of the skull here. And this is also a great feature, too, because in old, other, other traction units, a lot of things would have straps across the chin, and a lot of shock absorption would be given up through the jaw, and it would be uncomfortable for the patient. So this is grabbing the patient at the base of the skull, which can isolate the cervical spine or the neck. They'll be strapped in there so they can't slip out, and it's a simple 
uh, pulley system where it's going to be attached here, and it will cause some basically a, a, a distraction and then a relaxation. And up here is our computer screen where we're going to put in the specific protocols and techniques and uh, forces and times that we're going to use in order to treat the patient. With us here today is the illustrious Ms. Vicky, who has allowed herself to uh, be our demonstration model today. She is currently set up in the position for decompression of the cervical spine. Her neck is between, uh, is between the two uh, cervical holders, and her uh, head is strapped down in place. Uh, Dr. K? So, which is nice about this, it only takes a few seconds actually to set up. The patient's in an in a inclined position, which makes them more comfortable because a lot of patients that have cervical problems or pinched nerves, they feel much better in an inclined position versus totally flat, which is another great feature about this. So it's going to alleviate some arm pain just while they're in this position. We set them up, and we're, there's a, a, a lever here on the side where I'm going to increase the tension on, on Vicky's neck here, and she's going to let me know just when she feels it to be just somewhat snug. And you feel a bit snug right there? Yep. Okay, now I want to increase the tension just a little bit because I want to get a good firm grip there. I'm going to increase it about a half a turn, and I'm going to back it off just a quarter of a turn just so I can get a nice uh, snug, firm hold on there. She's strapped in, so she's not going to slide anywhere. And then we're going to go up to the screen here. We're, uh, we're going to have, or we have this, uh, a many, which is nice about this, we have protocols that we can already set up. So we can uh, save a bunch of protocols. We can even save it specifically to the patient. Um, this particular decompression table is what we call a Triton DTS table. It's made by Chattanooga. And we really like this table because uh, there's many decompression tables out there, but this has so many wonderful features that they've developed over the years that it's just so comfortable for the patient. So it's very user friendly. So what we're going to do is we can edit the the uh, the hold times. So we're going to keep her at a 20 pound limit here for a maximum. Our minimum is going to be a 10 pound uh, release. We go back to the home page and basically we're going to just start the treatment with a single touch of a button. Now what this is doing is she's only feeling approximately about two pounds of force right now. We give the patient a, uh, a button there. She can stop the treatment at any time. She feels uncomfortable if she does feel uncomfortable, and the, and the treatment will stop. Right now, we have this set up as what we call an intermittent session. So this is for a patient that has some chronic disc disease, nerve compression in their neck. They're not too acute, but they're having a lot of pain, a lot of arm pain. So there's not a lot of muscle spasm going on or It's just nerve irritation. So what this is doing is ramping up right now, and this is what we're talking about before, about testing those muscle spindle fibers and testing the tension of the neck here. It's pro progressively stepping up over the first minute here so that if she does go into spasm, it's going gonna, it's gonna to allow it to release and the, and the patient won't suffer any pain. So it's going to gradually work its way up to about 13 pounds of pressure right now, and over the next uh, 30 seconds or so, it's going to reach that 20 pounds of maximum pressure. So we're only talking about 20, 20 pounds of distraction. And the patient actually will start to feel only about tension right about now, maybe about 13 to 15 pounds. Are you feeling some pulling on mm -hmm. now, Vicki? Yes. Okay. So now it's just up to 17 pounds, and it's going to be the last phase before it hits the 20-pound um, distraction. Once it reaches 20 pounds, we have that design to hold to that 20-poundage uh, distraction force for a minute. Then it's going to release to 10 pounds rapidly for about 30 to 20 to 30 seconds. And then it's going to go back up again so that her total traction time is 10 minutes, but the treatment time is approximately 12 to 15 minutes, including our step up and our step down procedures. So right now she's at 20 pounds. This is the most tension she's going to feel. And you're feeling comfortable right now? You're uncomfortable. You're not uncomfortable. Okay, she's not uncomfortable. She's feeling good. And a lot of times, on patients that they have actually arm pain due to a pinched nerve in their neck, they can actually feel that that arm pain is now actually dissipated, and it actually takes the numbness or tingling out of their fingers while they're actually on the table. Yeah. At that point, it, it's 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 an extremely comfortable treatment. And I've had uh, for like a pinched nerve in the neck with the radiating pain like this, it it uh, people sometimes are in such guarding patterns that that. As we decompress that, it's almost like they sense that pressure coming off. With regular traction, or even when we when we when we mechanically pull with our hands or a towel to lift up, it's too much. There there is is too much of an adherence to the pinching in the neck. But the decompressive force with 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 this instrument is very very relaxing. Also, another feature within the machine is that we have a patient card that's in the machine. And that patient card records all of the data of the patient's response as far as their neck and lower back. 
so we can hook up uh, electrodes to the muscle response to the neck and back and that gives a biofeedback mechanism to the machine as far as the ongoing ongoing um, treatment program. So she just went through one cycle already. She's went through one cycle of a, comp a decompression and then a relaxation. And that's going to keep repeating through this process for this protocol we have set up. So she has approximately nine minutes remaining on this treatment. And what we're going to do with, um, say, a, a person that's come in with uh, cervical disc herniation and has radiating arm pain, we're going to treat them uh, approximately uh, two to three times per week for approximately four to six weeks. So we're talking about a total of eight to 12 treatments. In conjunction with this treatment, we're also gonna incorporate some electric muscle stimulation, ultrasound, myofascial release or massage, uh, some gentle chiropractic treatment, and then a stabilization program after she's done with this, um, with this phase of care. Because not only do, now what we've done is you know, we've helped heal or create a function in that area, and now we have to stabilize it, and that's what's important. This it, alone, just like anything else, chiropractic, uh, medicine, mm -hmm. or whatever it may be, it has, has a lot of difficulty existing uh, by itself. It, it needs a combination of everything in order to make the patient well. We're talking about holistic care or, or, or treating the whole patient. So this is just a great adjunct in regards to really instilling or taking that nerve pressure off in the acute phase, and then we're going to go through our typical uh, stabilization processes and anti-inflammatory processes with uh, other either medications or uh, acupuncture, ultrasound stimulation. Now, would this be considered, uh, you know, a passive or an active f phase of treatment? Well, this is, this is it's, it's, it's funny because it's a combination of both. I mean, we're applying something that we're not doing our hands, but it's actually doing an active role here. It's a mechanic, it's, it's a machine that's creating active treatment. So, uh, versus where uh, as chiropractors or physical therapists will have to stay in here and you know hold and then release with our hands and do a lot of work there's no way we can apply this specific force and this specific technique to a patient um, with such accuracy right. so that's what's great was we're taking a basically an active component and making it somewhat of a passive modality and regarding you know it, it's specific it's computerized and it's 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 very accurate I can honestly say that the results to date using this uh, instrument has been terrific. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, move on to the lumbar spine and its protocol. We're back for the demonstration of the, for the setup for the lumbar spine. Something I forgot to mention before, uh, the cervical decompression is a great alternative treatment for chronic headaches. Uh, when other things have not worked, sometimes decompressing into the cervical spine. And for those people that have headaches in the suboccipital region, meaning the region at the base of their head and neck, that can frequently take the pressure off of that and give a lot of living space for the, both the nerve and blood supply to goes, that goes to the head. We're going to pan out now because what we're, what, we're, what we're seeing is that Dr. Kirsten is about to hook, uh, hook up Vicky for uh, lumbar decompressive treatment. Uh, the first thing he's going to do is there is a belt that is uh, basically a Velcro belt that goes across the lower pelvic region, and that comes just above the iliac crest. Depending on, on it, when we, we, most of the time when people come in, they've either had an, M, they've had an MRI of their lumbar spine, and we certainly have imaging. So we're forewarned on, on, on specific locations where the problems are at, although the traction helps to benefit the, the, the total lumbar spine. So, but if, if we're looking to isolate a given area, we can, we can, we can put the actual belt at a point in which, in, in which it needs to be. So what he's doing is that he's just, uh, there's, it's a real sensitive field to put in the belt on, and he's got, he's got the magic touch with that. The second thing he's going to do is he's going to now uh, put, there's another belt that comes underneath, um, underneath the rib cage and under, underneath the breast area that is then a stabilizing force into the upper portion of the body. The, That's attached to the table. And, and, and that is also just, that is attached to the upper table, so it doesn't allow for the patient, as the decompressive force takes place, to pull the patient down. The next thing that we have is that we have a stabilizing bar that goes underneath the patient's armpit. 
And what happens is that that doesn't allow for the, to, for the patient to gradually be scooched down on the table when the decompressive force comes, comes into play. We have a, a belt that hooks underneath the pelvic area. And then the next step is we have um, supports that are going to go directly under the patient's, under the patient's knees. What we like with this setup is now, like I said before, that a lot of patients that suffer from low back pain, they know that they can't lie on their stomach. So the, we treat 90% of our patients in the supine position or on their back. This is much more comfortable for them to lie down. We have the support underneath the knees, and this uh, table can be raised up a little bit to make them comfortable. So this is a nice, comfortable position. Their head's in a com comfortable position. The muscles are more relaxed now. That's another thing. When you're on your back and your knees are bent, the abdominal muscles are relaxed, the lumbar muscles are relaxed. And then there's another pelvic piece here which we're going to tilt it up because what we want to do is we want to isolate certain aspects of the lumbar spine or where her disc um, herniation or, or, or bulge is. So we're going to tilt up the, the pelvic piece. We're going to crank this up so she's in pel what we call pelvic neutral. And she's going to feel her back flatten out a little bit now. Is that comfortable for you? Mm -hmm. I make sure the patient's totally comfortable. They should feel totally comfortable in this position. We hook up the distractive force here, and then we're going to go right into our computer, our preset programs. We're going to go right into the program, and now we're going to begin our treatment just as we did last time, as you saw on the cervical spine, the step-up process, and basically we make sure now that the patient has this button again. And now for this component, the actual table distracts and separates. It's not only going to pull the patient, as this belt tightens up, it's going to grab on the iliac crest of the tops of the hips here. It's going to give a little bit, it's going to get snug, and then it's going to kind of pull on. We're going to unlock the table. We unlock the table, and this is going to now, we're going to see the actual table gap. It's going to gap probably about anywhere from, you know, three to six inches, depending on how much distractive forces that we have. But that's where uh, some other things at other tables, it's just actually the table moves with the patient. It, it's an amazing component to 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 it itself. So you know what we're looking at is something that's that's going just like this to open it up, just like a almost like a can opener, opening up the joints in the lower spine. It's 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 amazing. You know, again, we have her set up uh, at approximately 55 pounds uh, maximum force. Now we're talking about you know only 55 pounds, but it's a lot of force because it's only distributed through the lumbar spine in that area of the of, of the of the disc problem or the nerve problem. Because when you got some force now distracting on that, there, there can be a lot of irritation that goes with this. So the patient should just feel a nice gentle pull. And as we're progressing up, we're going to, again, progress up those certain steps till we progress to the intermittent traction, where we're going to hold on uh, for a traction of approximately 55 pounds to, uh, for a minute, and then it's going to release to about 20 to 30 seconds. We're going to reduce her down to 35 pounds. So now, obviously, larger patients or heavier patients are going to require more weight and more distractive forces, but that's where we get in the patient's specificity, and it depends on how they feel. Right now, how, oh, for, how uh, about uh, how's this doing for older patients who older. have a, you know a, a lot of concerns for osteoporosis, brittle bones, you know, along with generative de, de, de joint disease? That's what's great about this. This is so that, that the pressure is gentle but specific. That uh, osteoporosis, there's no contraindication for that. Uh, there's no contraindication for many conditions that maybe we couldn't or weren't able to adjust the patient or be aggressive with them uh, and, and have trouble getting them better because we can't get movement in their joints. This is a great alternative. I, 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 I love the, the, the aspect, too, of us being a, able to address spinal stenosis, which was something that uh, utilizing chiropractic and physical therapy, as we do here, was something that was, was very difficult to get a handle on. But with, the, with this decompressive uh, therapy, what's happened is that it's given a lot of living room and living space to uh, delicate uh, joints and nerve structure. And again, uh, this is uh, the initial component of this. Now, the table's distracting. It's probably gapped about, about the width of my four fingers right now. And um, she's feeling some gentle force in there. Are you feeling okay? No pain? Okay. We actually, in, in other things and other aspects of treatment, when we've been stretching patients, adjusting patients, Patients like, the, you know, do you feel that? And say, yeah, I feel a little sore. And actually, okay, that's good. We want that. This is a little ex opposite. Because there's such sensitivity here, we actually don't want the patient to feel uncomfortable at all with this. We want them to feel just a nice pull. They should have no pain. If they have pain with this, then we reduce the weight and we change the protocols because the patient should not feel pain while they're in this. And like I again bef said before, a lot of patients just fall asleep during this treatment. I haven't had anybody that's been in pain while on the machine. It's, uh, it's just... 
it's taking pressure off is what it's doing. And depending on, uh, we can isolate, we can isolate a hip, we can isolate a left or right side by changing the angle of the machine, uh, sliding the belt angle over to kind of isolate patients that what we call are antalgic or have a, when you have a spasm, you're kind of cockeyed to one side and feeling, we can isolate actually one side of the, uh, the, the, the spinal column to reduce the tension in that muscle. And then sometimes if the patient just has so much tension, we can actually just lay them on their back, not do the, uh, the thoracic belt, and just, just create some pressure just to help make that spasm calm down by doing that gentle distraction. And it's like I said, it's easy on the patient, it's easy on the doctor. We don't really, we're not working too hard with this. We just got to, the hardest part is setting the patient up and taking them off. Something that we'd also like to talk about is the expanded role of the nature of this machine uh, outside of disc herniation, spinal stenosis, and uh, degenerative disc disease. The other aspect is people who have already had spinal surgery and are suffering from still having reoccurrent lower back pain and are suffering from adhesions or scar tissue in the lower back. There's not too much that surgery is going to do to help that. So what happens is that if we can stretch that soft tissue using this decompressive force, it's a whole other healing aspect and dimension. What happens is after anybody has any type of surgery, we're, we're cutting through soft tissue. And then what happens is tissue has, um, uh, when it heals, sometimes it uh, lays down an abnormal uh, tissue pattern, which we call adhesions. And what happens with adhesions is, well, the surgery was good and it re reduced the nerve irritation or the compression that would give a patient sciatic neuritis, drop foot, motor weakness of the lower extremity, people that had really, that really, really needed the surgery and were, had no other options. But what happens is what we see with patients that have had this surgery is those symptoms are gone, which are great, but now they develop some type of chronic low back discomfort, tightness, and they're functioning, but it's just tight. And what happens is tissue has memory. And with these, issue, with these uh, adhesions and scar tissue that's laid down in the muscle, the ligaments, the tendons in the muscles, what happens, it's like um, the muscle is stretched. Like if you took a, uh, a piece of plastic and you stretched it out and then you let it go, it loses its tensile strength. So what happens is that loses that elasticity of that rebound. So it develops these adhesions and the tightness in the back. Again, what this is doing is this help. Kind of like grizzle in a muscle of yeah. the... Of, uh... It's a rubber band loses an integrity. So basically what we're doing with this is we're helping break up that scar tissue and adhesions by doing that gentle decompressive force because like I said, it's not just pulling on a muscle. What it's doing is working on neuromuscular re-education. It's working on re-educating the muscles, re-educating the tendons, the ligaments, the fibers, and it's helping up break up that scar tissue and that adhesions as we, from gentle decompression forces, opening up, closing. So some of the, in that nature, this is something that's been going on for a long time. So that may take something, a longer protocol or over a period of time. They maybe wouldn't need it as frequently, but we're definitely going to incorporate some other manipulations, some deep tissue massage, other things to enhance that. Um, so we can address all the components of that and then definitely work into a pelvic spinal, spinal uh, protocol, which would be stabilizing abdominal, stabilizing low back. I know that you do um, uh, manipulation under, under anesthesia. Is uh, decompression uh, a component uh, rehab after that, after that type of treatment? Correct. Just briefly, a manipulation under anesthesia is another specific procedure that I do. It's, it's, it's manipulation. Um, by taking a patient, putting them in a light sedation so that there's no muscle guarding, there's no involuntary uh, fear of getting adjusted or getting movement or pain. And when the patient is sedated, we're able to manipulate or break through those adhesions and adjust the spine. And those are patients that maybe are, would have surgery, have discs, things we're talking about here. But they fit a specific protocol. We couldn't do those with patients with osteoporosis, any type of fractures. There, there's much more limitations to that. But in those patients that we do the manipulation or anesthesia, we break up those adhe adhesions, and now we can allow the muscles to re-educate and, and lay down that new fiber again in a proper way by putting them into the decompression after we go through a procedure of manipulation or anesthesia. And this is part of their protocol following that procedure. So now it's helping, again, train those muscles and create everything in a prop properly functioning pattern in regards to stabilization and correction. For Natural Healthcare Alternative, I'm Dr. James R. Golding. Thank you for viewing.
Dr. Kirsten, thanks for coming aboard today. And Pleasure being, to be here. Being here. And Ms. Vicki, thanks for being with us and, and being, a, being a, a trooper and letting us demonstrate uh, all the things we wanted to on you. Have a good day.